each and every one of us to look, listen, and learn. It is his desire eternally and beyond that we marry his son, Jesus. That should be your destiny and your purpose to marry the king of kings to marry the Lord of Lords. We're not going to be long tonight on the line, but this letter that Jesus has commanded to share should set you free because the truth will set you free. What time and season are we in after Passover? Remember, as you sit at the feet of Jesus, the man, Christ, the Son of God, he is the way to the Father. He shows you the way, the truth, the life of not only heaven, not only of the God realm, but the Father. And so what's on the Father's heart? After Passover, what is the times? What are the seasons when you are in the Father's heart? You are in his times. When you are after his heart, you are in his times. When you are after his face, you are in his seasons. And as you sit at his feet and call upon him, he will answer you. And then he will show you his heart, his times. Because you are a son. And because you are a son, to be one with the Father, you must be after his heart. To see, meaning behold, become, and release. This morning, by grace and mercy only, It is always a privilege and honor to be not only visited by Jesus, but to be taken to meet the Father. Because Jesus' greatest desire and prize is his Father. His greatest reward and prize is his father. And Jesus wants to show you, each and every one of you, the relationship he has with the father, that you may have the same relationship he has with the father. That's why he takes you to the father. Because the father is looking for sons. And the father brings you to Jesus because Jesus is looking for a bride. Therefore, you must understand training in humility for heavenly business and training in meekness for earthly business. The Father's business is both in heaven and on earth. Earth is for souls, heaven is for hearts. So your soul will be saved if you learn meekness. That's why one save, always save, is not true. Because until you learn meekness, your soul will not be saved. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Humility is for heaven. So if you're going to walk with Jesus in heaven, 
you need humility. If you're going to walk with Jesus on earth, you need meekness. If you're going to walk with Jesus beyond heaven, you need love. That is why every time you sit at the feet of Jesus, all he teaches is love, humility, meekness, because that's his heart. And that is the heart the Father is looking for, for you to be a son. So tonight I'm going to be sharing on exactly what he said. Training in humility for manifestations of the earth. For heaven to come on earth, humility is the heart. Come to me to satisfy your need for love and affection. Lay down pride. It is destructive force and has no love. It operates outside of love and only brings destruction to everyone. Pride is the first evil. Still rules and reigns Take note of that word. It still rules and reigns to let you know pride is a king. If it's ruling and if it's reigning, then what area of your life is pride ruling and reigning? So that love, humility, and meekness can rule and reign. Take note of that. Pride causes man to seek after ways contrary to seeking my heart. Pride, an ugly sin that is completely devoid of love in any form, a loveless position holds no love for anyone. Do you know when your love starts going down for others? Pride is ruling. If you have no love for anyone, pride is ruling in your heart and is seeking to destroy you and others. So now that we know that love overcomes pride and the fruits of love needed to overcome pride in our hearts is humility, then what you be, what is, when it says, be a man or woman after his heart, what should you be after? You should be after humility. Take note. If your love is going down for others, pride has ended. Take note of that. Humility, by contrast, loves. It is not self-seeking or self-serving. It does not rule over others. It waits. Wow. Humility is beautiful. It waits for others to be served first. Mm. It holds others in higher esteem. Than itself. It does not take advantage of others. It is not rude or arrogant. It is not haughty. It does not put on airs. It does not flaunt. It is beautiful, soft spoken, sweet natured, loving, caring, Christ like. God-seeking. It does not rule over others or force its position. Hmm. Are you dressed in humility so you can be honored by the King of Kings? Are you always putting yourself first and putting others last? Is humility the core value of your heart? Or you always want to be first? Jesus said, I didn't come to serve. I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. Are you serving others? Or you want to be first? Mm -hmm. It is only concern but the position of others. Hmm. This is humility. 
always in the background. Never vying for first chair. It is my way. See? He says, I am the way. So what is the way to the Father? Humility. Patient and resilient. Humility is a form of love. Can you imagine everyone on the line? You are sitting in the garden next to Jesus. And he's teaching you the way of heaven. The way to the Father. Humility. It, doesn't, it does not impose itself on others. It waits its turn. Are you waiting your turn? Humility waits for my time and waits its turn. Are you in competition? Do you want to be ahead of others? Do you want to be first? Hmm. It waits its turn. And you wait for your turn. See? When the process is finished, it will be your turn. Humility is to wait its turn. That means humility don't rush. It doesn't compete. It waits its turn, meaning it does not focus on others. It focuses on his king. Humility is the crown of the kings. It loves above all else. It does not seek to abase others to be lifted up. It only seeks good for those around. I want to talk about training in the way of humility. This is the way of the humble, the quiet, still heart are my humble ones. Are you his humble one? They walk quietly, never looking for position or privilege. They seek me in all ways. They are ever seeking their God. They do not want center focus. They do not seek attention for others or recognition or reputation. Yeah. You mastered humility on the line. Are you looking for recognition of men? Are you looking for attention of men? Are you looking for honor of men? Are you looking for approval of men? On the line? Do you want to learn the way of humility? This is how you catch the Father's heart. You win the Father's heart by the way of humility. They do not seek attention. For themselves or recognition of men. They only desire to be loved and cared for by me, their God. They trust me and I care for them. Humility is to trust. So you say you, you can't say you trust Jesus if you don't have humility. It takes humility to love him. It takes humility to trust him. I meet their expectations. Did you, did you ever hear that? 
and you are humble, he meets your expectations. I deliver their needs. I bring them all things they require to live by. I am their rock. I am ever faithful to my humble servants. I bring them peace, wow, and calm in every storm. I am always at their side, ever abiding, always willing to serve them. Wow. I love my humble servants. They are beautiful fragrance to me. I love them and they love me. We are inseparable. I am their heir. They shine bright as stars. They do not seek the ways of the world. I keep them content. The world holds no sway over them. They seek me for contentment and I bring them what they desire. They are never disappointed. Very few walk this path. Wow. Very few, Jesus said, walk this path of humility. Therefore, when you hear the Bible says, narrow is the way, he's talking of humility. Without humility, you cannot walk this path to fellowship with him, intimacy with him, communion with him. To be in relationship with Jesus, humility is a must. It is the road map to the Father. He said, very few walk this path. Very few find it. The ones who do find the road to my kingdom everlasting. To be humble, you must consider yourself last place. Never needing first place. Do you always want to be first? Do you always want to be seen? Do you always want to be heard? Hmm. Do you see how humility is protection? It protects you. It keeps you on the path of righteousness. It is wisdom to be last, not first. If you always want to be first, you are in the way of the fools. But the wise choose to be last, and not to be first. The fools seek first place. My humble servants are wise and know what pleases me. My children are humble. The ones the world never notices or sees. Wow. When you walk in humility, the world don't notice you. The world don't see you. Hidden away, out of view of the worldly. They are of no account of this world, but in my kingdom, they are rulers and reigners. Therefore, you cannot say you are a king if you don't have humility. You cannot say you are a bride if you don't have humility. Many are called brides. I'm trying to help you get chosen. I'm trying to help you get elected. You can be called bride, but not chosen to walk the path of bridehood. Many are called. Few are chosen, but fewer choose this path. Because this world is, is built on bride.
Ah. Oh. They are exalted in my heavenly realm. I honor my humble ones. They sit with me on my heavenly throne and enjoy my presence. The humble ones who make themselves last in this life enjoy position in my kingdom. They are lifted up and held in esteem for their life of submission on earth. These ones bring me joy. Bam. You cannot bring Jesus joy and the Father joy and rest and peace if you're not humble. I give them peace as they give me joy. I walk with the humble and make myself known to them. This is my gift for their sacrifice. What a sweet smell their love for me is, and I honor them. Humble is the way of the kingdom of God. Everyone in my kingdom is filled with humility. Take note of that. He didn't say everyone in my church. To be in the kingdom of God, you must be filled with humility. You know what humility is? Act like you don't know nothing. Knowledge of up. Love builds. Humility is to walk like you are foolish. Hmm. He says you he will use the foolish thing to confound the wise. He's talking about he will use the humble. He will use the meek. Pride cannot enter in my kingdom. It has no place in my kingdom. Only peaceful submission to me, dear God. This is my kingdom full of quiet humility where everyone is satisfied with the love and beauty that overflows. There is no one who is dissatisfied with this life in heaven. Only hope and peace abounds here. The world, sorry, this world, he's talking about his world, Jesus, overflows with love. Why is humility a beautiful thing to me, my son? I am pleased when my humble servants humble themselves before me. It is a show of honor, respect, and trust in me. Dear God, they put all their hopes and expectations on me to fulfill their needs. They remove their desire to seek themselves for answers through their own accomplishments, their own strength, their own self-seeking will. They are not inclined to follow their heart. My God. Have you heard people tell you, oh, just follow your heart? That's pride. You don't follow your heart. You follow Jesus' heart. His heart is the way to the Father's heart. And Jesus' heart is humility. That is the key to open the door of the Father's heart. They are not inclined to follow their heart. Abandon me. Wow. So can we break that down? If, humili if humility does not abandon Jesus, then meekness does not reject him. Therefore, you will abandon him if you don't have humility. You will reject him if you don't have meekness. They do not focus on their own selfish pursuits, which leads them away from the one true way, meek, their God. 
I am the only way, truth, and path. Many are deceived by pursuing their own ways, apart from coming close to me and seeking my will, my truth, and my direction for their life. Let me say that again. Many are deceived by pursuing their own ways apart from coming close to me and seeking my will, truth, and direction for their life. They pursue what the world says is right. Hmm. Let's take a look at what the world says is right. Money. Oh, he mentions it. Seeking money, position, fame, and the satisfaction of things apart from knowing me, their God. This is high class deception. I am not saying that you should not work or live life, but I am saying to seek me first and I can direct the right path to take as you live in this world. If you pursue your own plans and dreams apart from my plans and dreams, then you are running outside of my will and you leave yourself open to my enemy and you are living in sin because you are not in my will. This is pride and rebellion. Many walk in it. Hmm. Many, he said. He didn't say few. He said many are walking in pride and rebellion because they are seeking their own dreams, their own plans without his heart. I created humans and I also created them to trust me and walk in my will, to know my will, you must lay down your life before me in humble submission and seek me daily. Those who truly pursue me by devoting time to me, intimate time with me in the secret place, and reading my word will find me and my will. This requires choices. You must choose because worldly distractions can throw you off my straight and narrow path. Oh, there are many other paths to go on, but all leads to destruction on the road to hell is broad road that many fall into. Many think they walk the narrow path, but they are deceived. They listen to others who are also deceived. Hmm. You see, they listen to others who are also deceived. That's why if you don't sit at the feet of Jesus and hear from him, every word you are saying is deception. And you are deceiving others. And you are leading them astray. You don't know it. I'm going to say it again. If you don't sit at the feet of Jesus to hear his word and say exactly what he says, every word coming out of your mouth is deception. And you are leading many astray rather than to, rather than to his heart, to his face, to his feet. Oh, many of my leaders are deceived and deceiving others because they believe doing many works and staying busy in my churches is the way of eternal security. But that is deception. It is only by intimacy, truly knowing me, 
spending time, devoting time to knowing me. This is the key to eternal security and safety. Mm. Can I say that again? Many of my leaders are deceived. And deceiving others. Do you know how frightening those words are? That is why you should not, you should never want to be a leader. Be a servant first. If you have not served Jesus, you cannot lead people to him. Many leaders currently, he said, currently are deceived. Jesus, am I deceived? Don't exempt yourself because he's giving you the message. You are part of the message as well. That's why I always say it is grace and mercy to be on the Zoom. Many of my leaders are deceived. Wow. And they are deceiving others. But they think they are doing my will. He said many will be left behind. How can you prepare to face me in judgment if you never came close to me and learn what I desire and require of you? When you face me without this intimacy, take note of that. When you face me without this intimacy, you will be empty-handed because you have relied on your own beliefs, own thinking, own will. You will fall greatly short. You will miss the mark. The foundation of Holy Way is intimacy, not power. Fellowship, not gifts. Relationship, not crowd. Communion, not names and titles. That's why it's called Holy Father, Way Jesus. If many leaders are deceived, who are you to listen to now? Hmm. That's frightening, my friend. I fell at his face or at his feet. I said, my king, am I deceived? Is there any area where I am deceived? He picked me up and said, You are bringing me sons, bright and friends. You are in right standing with me. But take note, never stop bringing me friends. Rise and sound. The day you stop pointing others to me, you enter into darkness. You want to be in right standing with the Father and Jesus on the Zoom? Don't be a leader. Be a servant. 
to sit at his feet is to serve him first, not serve others first. Your first ministry is to Jesus, not others. You know people spend a lot of time ministering to others, but never minister to Jesus. You say, how do I minister to Jesus? Twofold. Songs of intimacy and holy dance. Don't be deceived. Many of my so-called leaders never spend time with me. You think I could have hope I could hold back my tears? I couldn't hold back my tears. Because his word is like a it's like a sword. It pierces your heart and soul. And bring conviction. Many of my leaders never spend time with me. My God, Lord, take my take ministry. Therefore, everyone on the line, who should be your leader? Jesus Christ. If he's telling you many of his leaders, the ones that the ones that we've been calling big names, they had never spent time with. Look, when you hear from Jesus Himself, humility and meekness is birthed. It makes you want to drop and lay down everything. When he says, Many of my leaders are deceived and they never spend time with me. My God, my Father. Yet, they are ministering to people. How can you minister to others? You have not spent time with me. That's pride. Humility is to sit at my feet. Look, listen, learn before you speak. If you don't know my heart, you cannot represent my my kingdom. Are you sitting at the feet of Jesus on the line? Or you want to be seen and heard by others? You want to be known? I couldn't stop crying. At his feet, repenting, he said, it is not about platforms. It's not about gifts. It is dwelling in the secret place where I can trust you as a friend. Many want to be relevant, but they are irrelevant to me. Ooh. It's like a rock that crashes when you hear his words. You're either going to come to the rock or let the rock crush you. It's not about platforms. It's not about, oh, he gave me this word. Oh, that revelation, he gave it to me. It's not about that. Can you be trusted in the secret place as a friend? Can he trust you as a friend? See, every new season and time, Jesus will tell you to come back to your first love. There is more. When the Father opened his hands today, and I saw the new world, 
the new heaven and new earth and beyond. He said there are new relationships beyond sonship and friendship and even bride. Wouldn't that blow your mind? What is beyond being a son? What is beyond being a friend? What is beyond being a bride? He said, behold, I make all things new. There is more. Not more knowledge, more intimacy. Not more gifts, not more power, more relationship. I want to walk. Let me show you what Jesus said. He said, though Micah, my life was cut short to 33. In fulfilling my destiny and purpose with my father. I am looking for a man or a woman who I will finish my life with. I was supposed to be on earth as a man for 120 years. Who can I live the rest of my life through to finish my book? Beyond the 12 disciples. He said they were friends. They were sons. But they were not brides. There are relationships beyond marriage. In the new heaven, the new earth. That's why I say, I make all things new. What's the new creature? What's the new man? What's the new woman? You think it's the same names? I'm just waiting. To share some secrets with you of this intimacy. For intimacies for the bedroom. Are you shut in and shut away with him? Or you are busy looking for the latest prophetic gossip? Are you distracted by church politics? Or are you distracted by loving him? Where is your gaze? Many of my so-called leaders never spend time with me. And they too do not operate in my will. And they are as if they're blind, leading the blind down the blind alleys of destruction. Many will be surprised how misled they have been because they trusted in those who know me not. And they themselves are greatly deceived. I share this letter with you so you cannot be in that group. Many will be surprised when they stand before me. Passover has come to an end. What is new? Don't be distracted, even by ministry. Because in your book in heaven, there is a level of intimacy he has called you to. And if you allow even ministry or anything to stop it, you will fall short. And you will be in the room called the room of the regret. The book of deeds will be open. 
the book of remembrance will be open. The book of life will be open. The book of the Lamb will be open. There are many books. Let me say this to each and every one of you on the Zoom. Never leave your first love. Intimacy with Jesus until he molds and shapes you into this image, likeness, nature, and heart. He wants to see himself in you. That can only be done by spending time with him. The more you spend time with someone, you start talking like them. Even in a natural marriage, the wife starts talking like the husband. They begin to have each other's characteristics. Many of my so-called leaders never he didn't, you know, he didn't say many of my circle leaders don't. He said never spend time with me. So who are they spending time with? If the leaders are not spending time with him, how about the sheep? Hmm. Your first ministry. The feet of Jesus Christ. Not people. If you have not ministered to him first, you should not minister to people. Or you will lead them astray because when you minister to him, you are to carry his love to others. If you have not spent time with him, what are you carrying to people? I did not get up from his feet until he says, now go and tell your son, tell my sons and daughters. You don't want to leave his feet because you don't want to even be deceived. It's not a fear of being deceived. It's, a, it's not failing him because love never fails. If love never fails, then you should do everything out of love. Love don't count the costs. It simply pays it. You call yourself a leader? Who are you spending more time with? Looking for souls or looking for him? I cried out and said, Jesus, you already have enough servants who are preaching your gospel. Hmm. Do you want to be a trusted friend of the king? Don't say yes, don't just say yes and not pay the price. You know what price means? Let me share one with you. When Jesus says lay down your life, it can also mean lay down your ministry. Lay down your gifts. Lay down your anointing. Lay down your mantle. And come at my feet. What if Jesus does not make you be relevant to people for seven years? Hidden away, shut away, nobody hears from you. Will you be insecure because you're not relevant? Because other names are being named by men on TV and all around the world, and your name is not mentioned? Do you want a name above all names among men? 
or you want your name written in the palm of his heart, the palm of his hands. You want your name written in his heart. After Passover, before you enter into the next season, because spring is almost up, he will first call you to another level of friendship or another level of intimacy after every season. Because it's not about the promises he made you. Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than the promises I made you? Do you love me more than the blessings I have for you? Do you love me more than the inheritance I have for you? Do you love me more than anything? It is loving him more than anything that makes you fit and worthy for more. You are fit by humility, he said. You are worthy by meekness. What if Jesus pulls you back on the Zoom? Just to spend time with him. And never sends you to go and preach the word. Just be with him. Will you be content? Or will you allow pride and pressure? Because you want to be relevant. You want everybody to know who you are, not who he is. The thousand deaths you must die a day is true. If you're not willing to die to self, you can enter certain levels of intimacy where it's all about him, not you. You must pass this test of love, not wanting attention from men, not wanting recognition of men, not wanting approval of men because men will exalt you. And when men exalt you, you will deceive people. Because Jesus didn't call you. He did not exalt you. Promotion only comes to reveal more of him, not promotion of self. Until you master humility and meekness, you cannot be trusted by the king of kings. Which one is better? To be in the secret place with the king and bridegroom or to be sent with messages of the kingdom? Just because you are sent with messages of the kingdom, that's not guarantee you a promotion of intimacy. You're just a servant. But a friend, sent or not, knows in close proximity to the king. He's trusted with the king's heart. What is your choice? Two trees. It's always before you daily. Tree of life or tree of knowledge of good and evil. The more knowledge you eat, the more the life in you dies. The more tree of life you eat, the more close you want to be with him more than the tree of lunch. What tree are you eating? What tree are you touching? I am looking for a man or a woman to live the rest of my life through. There are intimacies eyes have not seen. Relationships, ears have not heard. Fellowships, hearts have not perceived. My father has prepared. 
you know, like a child, I'm like, whoa, intimacies eyes have not seen. He said, new heaven and new earth is only the beginning. My kingdom has no end. If new heaven and new earth is only the beginning of the new creation, how does that look? And what's beyond that? What's beyond? That's hope of glory I'm talking about. Hope. Tonight, before we end, don't be in that category. Wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard. Uh, you only want to be seen and heard by the King of Kings. You only want to be seen by his face and heard. How heard? His heart beats. If his heart beats for you, what is your heart beating for? When you stand before me, your hands will be empty. If you did not choose this intimacy in this lifetime. Wow. If you did not choose intimacy in this lifetime, when you stand before him, it doesn't matter what your hands have done on earth. Your heart earned from him. You see, huh? Yeah. If your hands are empty, your heart has turned. And if your heart has turned, Where's your face? It was focused on things the king did not approve. The ultimate test of the human race is at hand. You know what Jesus said? In the days to come, it's going to be very hard to love me. Can I say it again? In the days to come, it's going to be very hard to love me. The love of many will wax cold. See? How will the love of many become cold? See why he said it's going to be hard to love me? Because the love of many is not going to be hot. It's going to be cold. Now we need to know what makes the heart cold. Hmm. Can I say that again? He said in the days to come, it's going to be hard to love The love of many will wax cold. Hmm. How do you keep your heart on fire then? He said, because iniquity will abound. So iniqui iniquity is what makes the heart cold. And stop your love for him. He said two battles are ahead. That's my fault. Let me read that one from yesterday. But the battle of the gods. And the battle of love. Sorry. The war of gods. The battle of love. What do false gods do? 
they turn your heart from the one true living God. Therefore, you have, if you are not rooted and grounded in love, if your hearts are not on fire, what you should say, baptize my heart with your fire. If your heart is not baptized with fire, it will become cold. When it becomes cold, you can have a cobra. Iniquity, he said, it's going to be hard to love me the days to come because of iniquity. You know, I will ask Jesus, what is the solution? How can we keep our hearts fire for you? Choose what Mary chose. She chose to sit at my feet. When you sit at my feet, your face is at my feet. And as my, as my feet has been in the fire, that fire for my feet penetrates your heart and you will walk with me in fire. He said, do miss this before we end. <clears throat> As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fire seven times. I'm going to increase the fire seven times. Now, when we say fire, I have to tell you the truth. Fiery trials. Fiery temptations. Fiery tribulations. Fiery tests. For fiery intimacy. Fiery relationship. Fiery communion. Fiery friendship. Without fire, as the earth becomes darker and darker, the cold winds of the dark night will blow out your fire. If you have seen at night when the winds are blowing because it's dark, it can blow out your fire. Those who do not abide in my presence, the darkness, will blow out their fire. And when your heart become cold, you will deny me like Peter. So, in the times ahead, the Antichrist, many will deny me because of fear. Their hearts will become cold. Will you be the John that will put your head on Jesus' chest? Never take your head from his chest. You know why I love John? At the feast, he always had his head on Jesus' chest. He was the one giving the bread and the wine last. Is your head on Jesus' heart? Let me give you another secret before we end. Many of your mind battles is a revelation of where your head is. If your head is on Jesus' heart, you are inviting mind battles. But when your head is on Jesus' heart, you will have a peace that surpasses all understanding of mind. Where is your head? You see why John passed the test? He never left Jesus. But the leaven did. Because he had his head. See, you can have bread and wine with Jesus. But where is your head? 
they all had bread and wine with Jesus, but only one had their head on his chest. That's the one who made it to the end. Bread and wine, we've been talking about is Passover, right? That's why I said, after Passover, what should you do? You should be like John. Put your head on Jesus' heart. If you don't hear his heartbeat, the gross darkness will make you deny him. Tonight, as we come, to, as we bring it to an end, May, June, July, August, as we've always said, let intimacy be your number one pursuit. All other things are second. Every day, I'm not letting you go until I'm your best friend. That's right. Lord, you don't have to use me. Come on. Is intimacy your greatest desire or being used? Is relationship your greatest desire or being seen? Is fellowship your greatest desire or being heard? There are 8 billion souls on the earth who will be the closest to Jesus. Who will be the closest to the Father? I'm not talking about works or rank. I'm talking about love. That's what they're looking for, closest. If we're going to do greater works, must have a greater relationship. If we're going to do greater works, you must have a greater fellowship. And to go greater, you must go deeper. You cannot be shallow in these end times. You cannot even be deep in these end times. You got to go deeper. Deeper is for greater. Closer is for higher. You can't even go high. High, you become high-minded. Deep, you can become, you can have false humility. But when you go deeper, it's meekness, higher, humility, greater, love, closest, trust. Hearts start being built. Grace and peace to each and every one of you on the Zoom tonight. Let love lead. After Passover, he is calling you to a new place of intimacy. Are you hearing the call? Let love lead you to the bedroom chambers. Amen, amen. We're not going to take too long tonight. God bless each and every one of you coming on the Zoom tonight. That is what the Father and Jesus desire to share in this time and season. Intimacy. Less of me, more of him. And it shall be to the willing and obedient in Jesus' name. Bless you, each and every one of you. Tomorrow we'll be on Zoom again for more of intimacy. How can I be close to Jesus and the Father? What are their love languages? What pleases Jesus and the Father the most? How do I come into his presence? How does he know me by face? by heart, by hand.
by name. He wants to know you by face. Means he wants to see your face. He wants to know you by heart. He wants to know you by hand. He wants to know you by name. Intimately. A bride who spends time with their bridegroom, she will become pregnant with him. That intimacy is a seed. You're going to birth glory. You're going to birth him. Amen. Hallelujah. So I love you all. Ponder on these words tonight. And be like John. All I want is your heart. That's it. That's it. Your heart. Because if I have your heart, all other things will be added. We are the seekers and lovers of his heart. And we will win his heart. Like Paul said, I count everything as lost to win. I don't mind losing as long as I'm winning his heart. Come on, somebody. I count everything as lost to gain. If you want to gain the excellency of this intimacy, you must be willing to lose some things. Are you on that level? Are you in that? Are you, are you in that sphere of thinking? What I got to lose to gain this? Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. What, what do I have to lose to gain this? See, Paul, Paul reached the excellency level. He, he went beyond perfect. Paul reached the excellent level of intimacy with Jesus. So there's good. Watch this. There's permissive. There's good. There's acceptable. There's perfect. There's excellent will. Excellent is the highest. But Paul said, I count everything as rubbish. Question before we end. What are you willing to lose? To gain this. That's a hard saying. Count the cost before you say yes. What are you willing to lose? To gain him. On an excellent level. Paul did it. And you can do all things through Christ. I want you to think about that. I don't want to gain Jesus to preach him. No. His heart. By grace tomorrow. We meet at 9 p.m. for more intimacy and fellowship with Jesus and the Father. Love you all. God bless you all. Have a good morning. Shalom.